In this brief video, I'll sketch the law of government searches of devices and data when they enter the United States. I would encourage you to watch the lecture on the Fourth Amendment in extraterritorial contexts before watching this video. Let me start with some straightforward law. Under the Fourth Amendment, is there a border search exception to the default warrant requirement? The answer, unambiguously, is yes. The Supreme Court and lower courts have repeatedly affirmed that there is a border search exception. Many courts have even allowed border searches dozens of miles from the actual border. Here's a diagram of the Fourth Amendment that I hope is familiar by now. In a border search, the answer to the first question is unchanged. If the government rummages through someone's device or the content of communications, that's a search. It's the second question where the law changes. These border searches are not covered by the default warrant requirement. Instead, they fall into an exception. They just need to be reasonable for some vague definition of reasonableness. So, I'll start with devices. And the legal question is, when can border inspectors examine the contents of a device? The majority view in the courts, for now, appears to be that no suspicion is required. Border inspectors are free to examine the data on a laptop, a tablet, a smartphone, a thumb drive, or anything else. In a 2013 case, United States against Cotterman, the Ninth Circuit set out a competing view. It held that no suspicion is required for a, quote, manual, unquote, search. Reasonable suspicion is, however, required for a, quote, forensic, unquote, search. What exactly differentiates a manual search from a forensic search isn't quite clear. The rough idea seems to be that a manual search is straightforward rummaging on the spot, while a forensic search involves shipping a device off to a lab for a thorough examination. So, that's the Ninth Circuit's view. A final view, argued by some legal scholars, is that some level of suspicion should always be required. Proponents of this view emphasize the Supreme Court's 2014 decision in Riley against California. In that case, the court declined to allow suspicionless searches of electronic devices incident to arrest, even though suspicionless searches of physical property incident to arrest are allowed. Scholars have argued that if digital is different and requires some suspicion during an arrest, then digital should also be different and require some suspicion at the border. All right, so those are the three main perspectives on border inspections of electronic devices. Again, the majority view, for now, is that no suspicion is required. Now on to data. And the question is, does the border search exception apply to internet traffic entering the United States? Put differently, under the border search exception, could the executive branch inspect every data packet that flows into the country? Well, the executive branch has hinted at this view, but it relies much more on extraterritoriality under the Fourth Amendment. The executive branch seems to believe that the extraterritoriality doctrine already allows it to collect one-end foreign internet traffic, including traffic exiting the United States. So the border search exception would be somewhat redundant. It's entirely possible that the border search exception could become an important issue for internet traffic in future. For now, though, it's more of a footnote.